Today I'm going to be motorizing the LEGO Technic 4 GT by adding a Technic Hub and two L motors. As always, the main challenge is going to be fitting the Technic Hub because it is quite large, and I actually think there's two spots where I could reasonably put it. The first and more reasonable spot is to replace the passenger side seat, but alternatively I could also take out the fake engine and put the Technic Hub there. The steering motor I think would perfectly fit in here directly in line with the Hand of God steering axle. I can remove the Hand of God steering and just replace it with the motor directly. And then the drive motor I think can fit somewhere in this hole there's quite a bit of space here but from what i can tell the fake engine is just one stud too low for it to fit nicely additionally the steering motor could probably go in the front right here but it's gonna be a really really tight squeeze so I'm gonna start off by adding the steering motor. What I immediately noticed is that if I remove the door, then there is a massive empty spot, or a hole if you will, where I could put the steering motor. If you're enjoying the video so far, then please subscribe because we're trying to reach a thousand subscribers. We're over half the way there. One new subscriber is one extra pet for my cats. This is not gonna be easy at all. The Ford GT is very densely built, so I'm gonna start off by removing all of the bodywork. And that actually looks kind of cool, reminds me of a go-kart. And after disassembling it even further, I can take the two halves apart, and the massive area where I can put the motor has now revealed itself. The most obvious way to attach the motor is just like this, directly adding it in, but I think this is gonna be a little too long, let's test it out. And yeah, it does not fit together, I'm gonna have to tear it down even more. So here's a little issue that I'm facing, after attaching the motor one stud further in, the whole thing is very flimsy because the shock absorbers are applying a lot of force to those black pieces, but I can't just directly connect them like before because the motor is in the way, and I also have to secure that tan gear because right now it just kind of flops around and the forces of the motor is just gonna tear it apart. I needed some more of these white pieces, but unfortunately I didn't have any in my collection, so I stole it from here and replaced it with some other parts that equivalently reinforce that area and now I can move on to reinforcing the front area. So I think what I did here is gonna work. I made this little sub assembly with those two white pieces and a flip flop beam and this should perfectly hold the black pieces together and the central hole is gonna reinforce the tan gear so it doesn't move around a lot. It was kind of hard to attach it here because there's like six pins or something. But eventually it went in place and now everything is super nicely reinforced. The unfortunate thing that I didn't realize though is that now the dashboard would not fit. So yeah, I guess this idea has to go in the trash. I found another way to reinforce it and now it's time to rebuild everything just to make sure that there's no other mistakes that I made. Well, guess what? It turns out that the motor is just too long and it simply would not fit with the lever for the rear wing. So I'm just gonna ditch this idea and I'm gonna attempt to put the steering motor in the very front. So it turns out this was not as hard as I anticipated. I had to replace a couple of pieces and also the front grill piece is a little bit bent it's kind of trying to pop off i'm pretty sure that's an illegal building technique but for now it's gonna be fine the steering motor is finally in i've built everything back up i only had to make a very slight modification the nose is like maybe half a stud higher but it's completely fine because the motor is finally in and it's all done let's move on to adding the technic hub i think it's just about gonna fit in this area replacing the passenger side seat but that top assembly holding the roof in place is a little bit too big so i'm gonna have to cut that down a bit let me rebuild it so it's now in and it actually took a lot more effort than I expected. It was kind of boring though, so I didn't record it. But before I move on to adding the drive motor, I just wanted to completely rebuild the body to make sure everything is good. Guess what? We've encountered more problems. That black axle thing is the thing that holds the door in place, but on the other side, I had to remove it to make the battery box fit. And it also sits at a really weird angle, so I'm gonna have to really start doing some math here. So this is what I came up with. I kind of used a little beam to attach it, and I didn't quite do the math, but I think it's at a slightly different angle than on the other side, but it won't be noticeable. I also have to slightly rearrange the way that you actuate the rear wing. You can see all the red 
red pieces here. I have to reinforce it. Apparently, I forgot to record it, so oops. But now it's time to add the drive motor, and I think I'm gonna add it right here, just above the red pieces for the rear wing and just below the fake engine. I do think I'm gonna have to move the fake engine up by one stud, though. And just by looking at it, honestly, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think I'm just gonna have to straight up remove the fake engine. The shock absorbers are directly connected to it, so if I move it up by one stud, I would have to put something else there. So yeah, I think the fake engine unfortunately has to go. That was not easy. I was too lazy to disassemble everything, so I had to bend pieces a little bit, but I don't think I damaged them. The fake engine is out, and if I counted my studs correctly, this is literally the perfect length for the motor to fit. The motor is in, but I now have to reinforce it, so what I did is I took one of these three long pin things, I added a little stopper on it so that it's only two studs long, and then I slid it in through that black connector piece into the gray flip-flop beams in the back. And now the motor is extremely sturdy and I just have to figure out how to attach the shock absorbers. So I used a couple of extra pieces and attached it to the motor making sure that it can't just pop out if you push the suspension too hard and the suspension travel is a lot lower now. You can see it barely does anything but it's still technically a suspension and honestly I think this is just gonna fit the gaps between the wheel arches and the wheels. And here we go I rebuilt the Ford GT and it's now fully motorized with the Technic hub, the steering motor and the drive motor, all the features features have been retained including the independent suspension, the opening doors, and even the lever actuated rear wing even though I had to rebuild it. And after throwing together a quick control plus setup, it now fully works and it's great. It is a little slow because the gear ratios are a little different than the Camaro that I built last time, but it's still extremely fun to play around with. And as always, if you guys want to pick up either the Ford GT or the motors, there will be links in the description. Let me know what you thought, let me know if you did this yourself, and if you haven't, I can only recommend it. It's really fun, both the building process and the final product. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because we're trying to reach a thousand subscribers and if you want to see another video from me, then check out this video next. YouTube thinks you'll really enjoy it.